The medieval woman is like a potted plant. She is limited and confined within certain societal boundaries that seek to restrict and control the ways in which she spreads her roots, the ways in which she uses her power and her influence. For example, moralizing biblical stories and characters were often used as methods of regulating the ways in which women use their power and their influence by including examples of deviant women, such as Eve, who happened to cause the fall of man, or Delilah, who sabotaged a male hero, were both juxtaposed against the pious and obedient Virgin Mary, who was often regarded as the ultimate Christian faithful. These characters and stories were used to regulate the ways in which women used their influence and condemn the women who misused it. Using a 14th century decorated manuscript, I argue that women's power and influence were systematically restricted and contained within the margins of accepted society. I observe the ways in which such restrictions visually manifest themselves within the marginal artwork of decorated manuscripts and allowed for a rhetorically charged reading experience, meant to deliberately associate imagery with text in an effort to promote endorsed behaviors and narratives to which women were meant to ascribe. Decorated manuscripts are objects produced in the Middle Ages, which occurred between the 5th and 15th centuries. Now, they were considered decorated because the text within the manuscript would be framed or surrounded by very beautiful, rich, and ornate decorations that often commented on, complemented, or visualized specific portions of the text. Usually, the artwork depicted folkloric scenes or represented different imagery that a medieval audience would be familiar with, which made the reading experience very personalized and very deliberately dedicated to the specific patron or reader of the text. For the purposes of my research, I have selected a manuscript known as the Literal Psalter. Now, Psalter is a private devotional which contains all 150 Catholic Psalms, including a liturgical calendar. I selected the Literal Psalter specifically because of its very beautiful and extremely deliberate decoration. Sir Geoffrey Luttrell, who was a prominent English knight and landowner in the 14th century, commissioned this particular Psalter. This manuscript is especially fascinating because of its very deliberate rhetorical imagery and female representation. I argue that the female imagery was deliberately used in order to promote and uphold established limitations by negotiating positive and negative imagery within the same manuscript. Essentially, it literally illustrates what a good woman looks like and what a more challenging woman looks like. Now I'm going to dive into some of the actual imagery that appears within the manuscript. I'm going to start by looking at a scene in which Sir Geoffrey Luttrell is depicted atop a decorated horse, which suggests that he's going off to some sort of war or a tournament, specifically due to the decorations that appear on the horse. Yet two women are also present in this scene. His wife, who hands him his helmet, and his daughter-in-law, who hands him his shield. These are very idyllic representations of aristocratic women because if Sir Geoffrey Luttrell is going off to war or to a tournament, then these women would have been left in charge of his household. They would have been the faces of his properties. The mere fact that they would have been entrusted with this kind of power shows that they do have power and influence within this society, yet it is contained within grace and elegance. I'm specifically interested in the ways in which that they are handing him his armor. They are doing it with one hand. So they're being represented as the strong bearers of his household arms, yet they're doing it in a ladylike manner. Much like the Virgin Mary, they are idyllic representations of serving the will of their Lord and their community through their actions. Yet their power is not their own. It must be used in service of the accepted male hierarchy and within the accepted male hierarchy. Now, imagine Sir Geoffrey Luttrell is reading and consuming this manuscript and he comes across this image. Does he think, yes, this is exactly the way in which aristocratic women are meant to look or act like. My male-dominated world is in order. Now imagine his wife comes across this image. Would she have found it acceptable or even to be an accurate representation of herself? This next imagery is a representation of a more challenging woman. It is a depiction of St. Catherine, who was a prominent figure in the early church because she went up against a pagan emperor and debated with him about religion and philosophy, and he was so threatened by her 
that he had her tortured and killed. Now I know that this is a representation of St. Catherine simply because of the spiked wheel that she is holding, which is one of the many torture devices used against her. Legend has it, she would lie flat on the ground and the wheel would roll over her. However, every time it came in contact with her skin, it would shatter. Additionally, she is crowned in gold and has a halo surrounding her head, which is usually representative of a holy figure within these decorated manuscripts. Her life and her story impacted thousands, and she got even more to convert to Catholicism, including the emperor's own wife. So what we have here is a very interesting and powerful figure in the church, yet in order to reach this status, she had to challenge the established male hierarchy. She had to find a way to insert herself into a male-dominated conversation, and in doing so, she flipped the hierarchy on its head. She challenged the idea of what a pious woman looked like. She complicated what a Christian woman was supposed to look like, or even act like. On the page facing the image of the St. Catherine is a scene of a woman beating a man with a distaff, which is a tool commonly used to weave or spin yarn. The man is crouched below this woman, begging and pleading as she utterly humiliates him through her abuse, using a traditionally female tool. It's interesting to see this scene displayed so closely to the St. Catherine because it might represent the same sort of humiliation that the emperor felt when he interacted with Catherine. It is a complicated role reversal that challenges the limitations placed on women's power and influence. It breaks the pot that women were planted in. Now imagine that the Latrell women might have encountered this image. Would they have found it interesting? Interesting enough to start challenging their own hierarchy. Maybe Sir Latrell had found this image and he thought it was disturbing. Or maybe he thought it was funny because it never would have happened in real life. The broader rhetorical implications of this imagery are especially fascinating because of the myriad of interpretations and reactions that each reader might have had upon interacting with the manuscript. The Luttrell women, for example, might have interpreted it and taken it into their own lives and started challenging their male-dominated hierarchy, or found new ways to live within it. This is especially interesting to look at in a modern rhetorical context because it reveals a lot about the evolution of the ways in which women have been represented historically. In this first image, you see a 1950s Thai advertisement in which a woman crouches below a man subserviently handing him his breakfast. The caption reads, show her it's a man's world. This is interesting to me because it is very similar to the very first Latrell image that I showed. It is the systematic perpetuation of the idyllic service and obedience role that women have been forced into. This next image is from a series titled In a Parallel Universe, in which a Lebanese photographer switches the gendered roles, placing the man in a more subservient position. It's interesting because it challenges just as overtly as the St. Catherine or as the abusive woman do in the Latrell and reveal the historic and modern struggles and complications that women still undergo in their representations in media. This is a fascinating dynamic where a woman, in order to be taken seriously, needs to take an aggressive stance that humiliates or overpowers a man and places him in the more subservient position. There's really no equity between the two. So whenever we encounter images such as these in the future, we need to ask ourselves very specific questions. Why these women? Why here? And most importantly, what do these images do to promote or challenge certain narratives? Thank you.